Good morning, faithful listeners. You have tuned in to the P40 Ministries podcast, the one place where you can get a daily explanatory Bible reading to start your day strong. This is your host, Jen, bringing you a brand new episode out of Matthew. Hey, faithful listeners, thank you for tuning in to the P40 Ministries podcast this morning. The weekend is only two days away, which is awesome. Very excited about that. Hopefully um, my poor husband doesn't have to work this weekend. I feel so bad for him. He's had to work for the past two weekends, so hopefully he gets this weekend off and uh, he's allowed to have a nice relaxing day. And I hope the same thing for you guys, that you uh, get the weekend off and have a nice relaxing time. I used to actually have to work every single weekend. I used to have to work on Saturdays every single week, but I did get Mondays off, which was kind of cool. So I got Sundays and Mondays off. So my weekend was really weird. I do know a lot of people that do have to work on Saturdays, but hopefully you get a nice relaxing day off this week at least. We're going to finish out Matthew chapter 14 today and read verses 22 through 36. So let's read these 14 verses out of the W.E.B. version of the Bible. Well, I'm going to read out the W.E.B., but you, of course, don't have to. Uh, Whatever version you like, that is the version you should read out of. But nonetheless, make sure to grab that cup of coffee as we go ahead and start reading this. Before we begin, though, I'm going to do a quick recap. Jesus was feeding the 5,000. He was allowing this demanding crowd to take, honestly, a lot out of him. He had wanted to go to a secluded place, but the crowds continued to follow him and expect things out of him and he ended up healing them and having compassion for them and teaching them and then at the end of all that he fed them so he must have been very very tired at the end of all this but let's start reading verse 22 here immediately jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away after he had sent the multitudes away he went up into the mountain by himself to pray when evening had come He was there alone, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea, distressed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. In the fourth watch of the night, Jesus came to them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a ghost, and they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Cheer up, it's I, don't be afraid. Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the waters. He said, Come. Peter stepped down from the boat and walked on the waters to come to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was strong, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus stretched out his hand, took hold of him, and said to him, You have little faith. Why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, You are truly the Son of God. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret. When the people of that place recognized him, they sent into all that surrounding region and brought to him all who were sick, and they begged him that they might just touch the fringe of his garment. As many as touched it were made whole. So directly after Jesus feeds the 5,000 people, he not only tells his disciples to leave, but he also tells the crowds to leave. I can think of a couple reasons why he would have done this. Firstly, he just needed a break. (laughs) He had wanted to go to a deserted region beforehand, before all these multitudes came to him with their sick. And that was his goal from the beginning was to go somewhere deserted and probably pray or rest away from the multitudes and crowds of people that were very demanding. The second reason was if we read John 6, verses 14 and 15, we'll see another side of the story. When Jesus was feeding the 5,000, it says in John 6, verse 14, after the people saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. So he saw that the people's attitude changed toward him after he had fed them. They started realizing this is the prophet that the other prophets were telling us about that's going to come. This is the Messiah. They wanted to force Jesus to be the king. 
And Jesus didn't want to be the king. He never intended to come to earth to be the king. So he ends up leaving. In Matthew 14, what we were just reading, you can see that that's why Jesus immediately wants to leave. He didn't want to be the king. He wanted to send away the crowds and just get out of that situation. So that's what Jesus does. And so he tells his disciples, I'll meet you on the other side. Just go ahead. And Jesus spends the entire night alone on a mountain. And it says that he was praying. So he was probably praying and just taking a breath from all those crowds and just constantly being around people. He was human. (laughs) After all, he needed to sleep and eat the same way as everyone else did. So he goes to the mountain, probably to both catch a breath and to pray to the Father. But then at three in the morning, it says in verse 25, the fourth watch of the night. So that would have been three o'clock in the morning. Jesus sees the boat that he had sent his disciples out on. And remember, he was on a mountain. And plus, Jesus is God, so he can see everything. And so he sees his disciples' boat struggling in the middle of the night with this crazy wind. And this was probably getting close to the Passover time, so this might have been spring. At this time of the year, storms would have been pretty common. Spring storms would have rolled in unexpectedly. So the disciples are stuck in the middle of the sea with this storm surrounding them, and they're struggling against the wind and the waves. So Jesus goes down to help them, and he starts walking on the sea, it says. And actually... The W.E.B. mentions Job 9.8, which is kind of interesting. In Job 9.8, it says, He alone stretches out the heavens and treads on the waves of the sea. So Job was prophesying here that, you know, God indeed can just walk on water. So that's what Jesus does. He goes out and meets his disciples in the middle of the sea, but they freak out. They never saw Jesus do this before. They've never seen anybody do this before. It's impossible. So they see Jesus walking towards them on the sea and they freak out. They're like, it's a ghost. It's a ghost. And they cry out in fear. And let's be honest, if you and I saw Jesus walking on water, we would be freaked out too. We would be super freaked out. So imagine how these disciples were feeling. Plus, they're probably already very emotional because they're scared from this storm that might capsize their boat. So they're prob- their emotions are probably running really high already. And then they see this impossible act being done. Even though they just saw Jesus feed the 5,000 people, they probably just weren't expecting Jesus to walk across the sea to get to them. They expected to meet Jesus on the other side. So it- it's just a funny story. But the disciples freak out and immediately Jesus says to them, he's like, no, 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 it's okay. It's me. It's okay. Don't be afraid is what he says. And he also says, cheer up. It is I. We often see Jesus say, I am, I am, I am all throughout the Bible. This was Jesus using the Greek word ego, I am me, which means I, I am. In English. So Jesus was using ego a me. And this is significant. And I could go into this a lot more, but I'm not going to until a later date. But when Jesus says, I, I am, that is him saying, I am God. Because if you look all the way back in Exodus, when Moses sees the burning bush, God was in that burning bush and he said to Moses, I, I am. And Moses was like, I don't understand. And God was just like, I am that I am. And Jesus is saying the same thing here. He's saying, I, I am is here. Don't be afraid. So he's not only saying, look, it's just me, Jesus, but he's also saying to them the I am is here. God is here. You don't have to be afraid. So Peter hears Jesus say this and he says, Lord, if it is you, Command me to come to you on the waters. So Peter would have known what Jesus was saying there when he says, I, I am. So he says, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the waters. And Jesus says, come here, do it. So Peter steps down from the boat and we imagine a tiny little boat, but it was probably a decent sized boat. And he starts walking on the waters to get to Jesus. And we do know one thing about Peter. He is very sporadic. (laughs) In fact, I very much relate. If there's anybody in the Bible I relate to, I believe it's Peter. 
Peter is fearful. He has anxieties. He is scared a lot. He is very sporadic and also a little bit arrogant. It's not until the end of his life when he, when he, um, I'm getting a little bit more apologetic than I usually do, but it's not until the end of Peter's life when he writes first and second Peter that you just see this change in Peter of who Peter was and who he was at the end of his life when he, when he wrote first and second Peter, it's just a fascinating transition that he makes from arrogance to extremely, extremely humble. At this point in time, I do believe that he was younger and he was more arrogant and probably was excited to be one of Jesus's disciples and thought he was special because of that. But he, he's also just a very sporadic person. So anyway, Peter goes down and walks on the water to get to Jesus. But then he gets scared because he sees these waves and these this wind coming up on him. And he looks at the wind instead of Jesus. He looks at the waves. So he takes his eyes off Jesus and he immediately begins to sink. And as he sinks, and this is the most fascinating part of this story to me, he cries out, Lord, save me. So every time... Peter does something like this, becomes afraid. He clings to Jesus. And that is the most fascinating thing to me about Peter himself. He clings to Jesus in the midst of his failures. So he asks Jesus, Lord, save me. We don't know how far away Jesus was from Peter, but all of a sudden Jesus is right there next to Peter's side. And he takes Peter's hand and he pulls him out of the water and comforts him. But then he says, you of little faith, why'd you doubt? And this is just humbling Peter. Humbling Peter by saying, you were focused on me, but then you took your eyes off me. You didn't need to do that. That was your own fault. And then you began to sink because of that very reason. And then he takes Peter into the boat And immediately all the disciples begin to worship Jesus because not only did he say to them, I, I am, which they would have understood from the story of the burning bush, that that meant that Jesus was saying that he was in fact God, but also they're worshiping him because the wind had just stopped when Jesus got into the boat. They saw this another miracle take place. They saw him feed the 5,000. They saw him walk on the water and then all of a sudden the storm is just gone. So these are three crazy cool miracles that they had just seen in a day's period of time. And now they're finally realizing that Jesus is the Messiah and he is in fact the son of God. And Jesus accepts the worship. There is never once in the Bible that says that Jesus didn't accept worship. So that just proves right there that Jesus was in fact God. Because if we look at anybody else who does these miraculous miracles like this, for example, Elisha in the Old Testament and angels and and, uh, Paul, everybody who does the work of God never wants to accept worship ever. Jesus was the only one who had come from God, just like Elisha and Paul and Uh, the other prophets of old that did miracles, Jesus was the only one that accepted worship. So now after this, they cross over and they come to the land of Gennesaret. When Jesus gets off the boat, the people all see him again and they're demanding all over again. They call out to all their friends and families and neighbors and relatives and whatever else. And they say, Jesus is here. Jesus is here. Let's take him our sick. And they're using Jesus. And it's just such a sad, sad state of affairs that they're just fully using Jesus. Jesus is probably still very, very tired. You know, he was up since three in the morning with his disciples and helping them as well. And now he has to help hundreds of more people. And it says... They begged him that they might just touch the fringe of his garment and they brought to him all who are sick. And that's verse 35 and and 36. But it says that as many people as touched the fringe of his garment, and and you remember, um, I might have talked about this. I can't remember if I did or not, but Jesus probably wore some sort of um, tassels that showed that he was a Jewish man. And so this, this garment would have had tassels on it. So they're asking to touch one of the tassels of Jesus' garment and everyone who did was healed. 
everyone who did was healed. And this is just Jesus being compassionate towards the crowds once again, even though just imagine how tired Jesus was. When I'm tired and people are demanding of me, I am nothing like Jesus. I'm like, get out of here. I don't want to talk to you. I want to go back to bed. My poor husband. <laughs> But yeah, this is just showing how compassionate Jesus really is, that he's been doing nothing but serving people for the past 24 hours or even longer. So this is the end of Matthew chapter 14. This was a really fun chapter for me to talk about because they had so many cool stories in it. And, you know, just with the miracles and everything, I loved talking about it. And I hope you guys loved listening to it. And if you did, make sure to rate the podcast five stars from wherever you're listening on. It depends on um, the platform. Sometimes they don't have a rating that you can rate the podcast. But if you're on Breaker, you can rate it. If you are on, um, I think Stitcher does rate it as well. If you are on Apple Podcasts, you can absolutely rate it. And if you're on Audible, you can actually rate every individual episode on Audible as well as the entire podcast as a whole. Friends, join me tomorrow for another episode out of Genesis at 6 a.m. And also go to my website, www.p40ministries.com. I typically do a blog post on Saturdays if I have time to write one, but I do my best to get one out to you guys every Saturday morning at 6.30 a.m. And that is just a way for me to um, not only take a break from podcasting all week, but also to, to provide all the faithful listeners with content on Saturday mornings that is biblical and that might help you guys uh, st still continue to build a consistent Bible reading and studying routine. Friends, I've got nothing else to say except happy listening and God bless.